morning. I am Dr. Nagarjuna Mataru. I am a consultant in pulmonary medicine at Yashoda Hospital, Somajigura. So today we will briefly discuss about uh, influenza, uh, which is a disease which is very discussed about, people are scared of. So what is influenza? Influenza is basically a viral infection which affects predominantly the patient's lungs. So this influenza is a virus. There are several types of influenza. Broadly, it can be called as a seasonal flu or the swine flu. Swine flu, the name itself, many people are scared because many people think that once you get swine flu, then it's a very bad disease, which is actually not true. So we'll talk about what exactly is this and how do we get the disease. So how does influenza affect the person? Influenza is a disease which spreads from person to person. So basically, when a person suffering from flu, if he coughs or if he sneezes, then there are small droplets which are released. These droplets contain the virus particles and they are present in the air atmosphere surrounding the person. And when a healthy person who comes into the close vicinity of uh, such people who are having flu, they tend to inhale the same air and then the, person, the virus goes into the healthy person and then causes the disease. The other way is through if, when a person coughs or sneezes, these droplets also fall onto the tables, chairs, the curtains and everything. And when we touch those chairs or tables where the viruses is there and then rub our nose, again it can go inside. So basically influenza is a virus, viral infection which spreads from one person to another person by droplets. Then what are the symptoms of flu? So the basic symptoms of any flu are uh, fever, cold, cough and throat pain. So uh, usually whenever a healthy person gets flu, it's usually a self-remitting illness. Majority of them, up to 90% of them, improve with basic medicines and they do not have severe flu. But a small subset of people with flu go on to develop a more severe form of disease in which they have difficulty in breathing or called known as breathlessness and some people can actually go into respiratory failure, some people can go on to ventilator and people can even die if the swine flu is a severe one. So this only happens in a small subset of patients. We should be able to identify those people who are at a higher risk for developing complications. So who are those people who develop complications? So predominantly children, elderly, uh, pregnant ladies, people who are immediately following delivery and people with already pre-existing lung diseases, heart disease, kidney problems or diabetes. So these are the groups of people where if they develop flu, the chance of developing severe flu is more. So these are the groups of people if the patient develops symptoms, we should be more proactive and start treatment early. Also, certain healthy people also can get a severe form of flu. This happens by chance. And what are the alarm symptoms? So when do we have to be worried when a person has this flu symptoms? We should be worried if the patient starts having difficulty in breathing or if the fingers or the lips turn blue in color, if he has severe headache, if he has frequent vomiting or if the patient loses consciousness or the patient starts having blood in the cough. These are some of the symptoms when we should be worried and we should immediately go and seek a medical attention. So when we, how do we diagnose flu? Uh, swine flu is basically diagnosed by a test known as a throat swab. A sw small swab is taken from the back of the throat and is sent for the viral detection. And if it comes positive, we label the person as having seasonal flu or the swine flu. How do we treat it? We have special medicines for these viruses. These are known as antiviral medicines. The most commonly available one is tablet or seltamivir. The earlier we start, the better it is. And usually it is given for anywhere between 5 days to 10 days. And once the patient improves, the tablets are stopped. How do we prevent infection from spreading? It's basically to use proper cough etiquette. People who have cold cough should wear a mask preferably to prevent it from spreading. We also have vaccines. This is something which is very important. A flu virus, a new vaccine is produced every year and people who are at a high risk for developing flu have to be vaccinated every year because every year the vaccine changes. Every year the virus changes, the vaccine changes and we have to give the vaccine every year. This is one way of preventing flu. Second way of preventing flu is suppose a person has been diagnosed as having swine flu. People who are in the close proximity, who have been living with them in the house, they have to take tablets. So the same medicine which is give, being given to the person is also given in a preventive dose to those people so that those close people who are in close vicinity of these affected patients will not get the symptoms. So this is about swine flu, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment and prevention. Thank you.